Hi everyone and welcome back. So now we are going to talk about Next.js with the Passport and GWT. You can call it as a token based authentication and we are going to use Passport library for it. Okay. So this part, this is a third part of this whole playlist. I will say third segment because in first we talk about basic, then type ORM SQLize and then third is authentication using Nestjs. I mean you will be having email and password based on that you might be generating token and you will be using passport local strategy for it. So we'll talk about it. So this is divided into three different videos. One we will do the baseline then second we will introduce the passport and third which is a demo of the whole application. Okay and we can use the existing application we have built like uh, the, the application which we, were, which we were using in the last video. We were talking about the sequelized migrations and all. Okay, now what we need to do is we are going to write uh, controllers and services for the authentication. I mean, we will provide our registrations and the login mechanism with our application. So we can say we have a controller domain, we have the entities. So this is our user entity. I mean, we will be taking the input of uh, email as a username and password. I think this will break. So this is the email and this is the password. We have these two things. Email is a unique. We have added it uh, like this using annotation. Okay. Now what we will do is we will write our controllers and uh, services to do this. And we will also add some helper methods because passwords we are not going to just store the text value. We can use a bcrypt for that. Okay, so let's get started with this. What we will do is consider that we already have this user entity. We have this database connection. Everything is set up already. We can just go ahead and start writing our service. Okay, we already have this email and password field in the, the user entity where ID is a primary key generated column. Okay, so let's go to our controllers or services. Here we will write our service layer because now user will log in, user will create and user will log in. So for create we have to write a method in the service which should be able to create a user. Okay, so we can write a user service here. And you will also understand how we are actually using these repositories inside our services. Okay, and we can just create an injectable service here. And this will be export default. Export default class user service. <coughs> and uh, so this is injectable service. We'll just import the things required for this. Okay, plain and simple. Now here we will write our constructor and in the constructor we will inject the user repository. So you can already see this is our user entity. Right. And uh, I think let's export them default. Otherwise. Export default class user. It's already default export. So class users, let's see the other entities. Okay, these are default exports. So we are good there. Because why, why I'm checking that because I'm using this domain module and we are importing all the entities which are default export. We are importing all the services. So you don't need to provide each and every service here. You just write your service in the services folder. The only thing is you have to do the default export, not named export. Otherwise, that service will not become a part of the provider. Okay. So here you just put all your services like user service we are creating is it's a default export and we will write our constructor. Inside constructor, we will do the dependency injection. So this is important inject repository inject repository and we will provide the entity we are going to use user entity here 
and the instance of this private user repo and the repository of type user this is called a dependency injection of a particular entity inside your service we have to import all these things add all missing imports sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't okay we have imported all these things now we will write our methods our methods can be simply a sync uh, get by email let's say how we do this get by email base you have to find a user by email either it can be a public if you are going to access it from the controller public async get by email and here we'll do const user and we'll be using this dot user repo user repo dot here you will write find one so this is a method provided by the type ORM and here we are passing email okay email is something which we are taking in the argument okay we are good here this is going to return a promise so let's put a await here and then if we got the user then return it if it didn't receive a user I mean it's either way if user is null then you will be throwing an exception the std found uh, exception user with this email does not exist I'll just use this particular exception if user is not there then throw a HTTP exception otherwise return user a simple method and just fix all these lending errors and all we need to import HTTP status code and HTTP exception from angular common I think okay now let's do a public async create create method which should be able to create a user and we'll be creating a DTO now I, I hope you know what what are what the DTO means DTOs we are creating to define the validations on the payload for either request parameter query parameter or whenever you are passing anything in the body so we'll create a DTO folder and here we will add user.dto.ts and inside that we can define our DTO the DTO will be simple as uh, it will have just a simple class okay and its email name and password okay we are good here so this is what we are getting in the DTO we will import it and we need to initialize all these things okay so we are good here now we can actually import this create user DTO here because we are going to get the user and user will be of type uh, create user DTO and once we get the payload from this we can just write uh, we can get the we can use this repository again const new user equal to await this dot user repo Boy, this is little slow user repo dot create we can use and we can just directly pass the user object okay and we can say await this dot user repository dot save this dot user repo dot save and we already have a new user object that's it and return new user a simple I mean uh, a plain and simple create user functionality using service now this can be called through the controller controller will have this create user DTO it is not importing import this from the default 
now we have our service ready now you can add a few more methods because here we are talking about uh, user authentication so we, we want to allow user to create and do the login i mean create user using sign up and the login user using login met method okay we already have a domain module so you don't need to import export anything we are doing a default export of service we will be creating one controller later for now we are good right now for handling the password encryption what we need to do we need we can use a bcrypt okay so we will be just importing a particular module so let's add that so we need to install bcrypt bcrypt and the type definitions for it bcrypt okay now i mean once this module is available this will help us to actually compare the hash password with the string password and store the password after doing encryption so we already know that we are using the register method i mean this create user is nothing but a register method okay so here we will use that uh, decrypt to hash the password from the create user dto okay so we can simply do it const hash password equal to uh, we will write uh, so we will import bcrypt bcrypt dot hash and here we have a user dot password and the salt value is 10 and in the create user so now here we are calling user service dot create then okay let's do one thing this bcrypt and all we can actually create in the authentication service okay let's keep this isolated this authentication service will give us whatever we need so we can create another service which is authentication service dot ts authentication dot service dot ts and in authentication service we will actually do this registration mechanism and we will import the user service here so i mean how how can you do this the simply is you can actually use one particular service and inject into another so let's do that simply i will just use my template code so what we are doing is this is the registration dto user service we are importing here and this is also injectable service okay and this user service we are injecting inside this so we can import that i think i can import directly import user service from we already have a file user dot service so this user service and we can registration dto will have the password and all these things so it is same as create user dto okay from there you will get the password and let me import all these things okay so i mean i hope you, now you are clear what we are trying to do here we have this authentication service i will do the all these imports and be first we are generating the the salt password and then we are setting up this password and then once the user is created we are uh, making the password null and returning that user created user okay so let's connect in the next video i will meanwhile i will finish this both the services user service and authentication service okay uh, thanks everyone